Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to our introduction to ITOT video series. With me is Christian. Yeah, hi Jeremy. Glad to be back here with you. Yeah, so it's been some time since we last recorded it and as you can already see, you are now seeing the new layout of Learn. I think it should be more intuitive to navigate through it. Uh, we will cover more of that in a separate episode where we talk a little bit more about documentation and learn and uh, stuff like this. So, in, But in this episode, what we want to focus on is just the content that we're seeing here. Uh, we will talk about process control, sensors, PLCs and actuators. Yeah, exactly. And I would say let's uh, dive uh, into it directly. So, Jeremy, um, how do you control uh, production machines in general? Can you give us a quick overview over the over the role of uh, PLCs, of sensors, actuators, and uh, how does everything work together? Yeah, and this part, I think, is the most interesting part for someone working in IT. Um, we're going to take a little bit more theoretical approach here, but with this er theoretical approach, you're able to understand basically every production machine. So how it works is you always... In a production process, you always have sensors, for example, like temperature sensors. You have a computer, as, and the sensors are connected to the computer, and the computer is called PLC, Programmable Logic Controller. And then you have actuators, for example, heating or cooling elements. And this together is also called a control loop, because what happens is the sensors, um, for example, in a refrigerator, the sensors are recording temperatures. They send, they send this to the PLC. The PLC is seeing, okay, it has a target temperature. It's seeing the current temperature, um, maybe some additional information. It's doing some algorithms on top of, top of that to control the heating cooling elements so that you can maintain a stable temperature, for example. Um, then you can do like all of these advanced logics in it. For example, if the door of the refrigerator opens, you will have automatically, uh, the temperature will decrease very much, uh, very quickly, very, very fast. Uh, so you have to turn on the cooling elements uh, also quite exponentially to counter against that. So, th and this is, this was now an example of a refrigerator, re refrigerator, but you can apply that to basically any other process where you have to maintain a constant position, a constant temperature. Um, you you have, it doesn't always have to be like constant. You can also have like moving things. Uh, then it's also called like an NC numeric control. I think it can also be like in a, in a car, the uh, uh, speed control, right? Where you... Um, uh, yes, speed, yeah, speed control is like the, 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 the perfect case for, uh, for, for PID controllers um, and stuff like this. So it's also in cars, um, yeah, but here we're talking about like production machines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so maybe you can give us a little bit more info about uh, sensors and actuators. Uh, how does it everything work together? And in, in theory, um, I heard, for example, that there, are of, of course, that there are different kind of sensors uh, we use, for example, in the production environment. Uh, t um, temperature sensors, light barriers, um, vibration sensors, and etc. So. What are the different types um, and uh, how does everything work together with actuators? Can you give us a little bit more insights about that? Yeah, so with sensors and what I'm going to um, describe now is not, not everything will be in the, in the text that you find here. So basically you have all various types of sensors um, and they all work on based on some kind of physical principle. It really goes down from like capacitive sensors for vibrations, there's always a physical principle behind it, which is either outputting like a current, a voltage, or changing the resistance. You can basically all the types of sensors you can always bring down to that. And then you have a range of analog converters, which will ba basically try to adjust the signal, try to normalize the signal, and then as an output of a sensor, you typically have a somewhat normalized signal, either 0 to 10 volt, 4 to 20 milliampere, um, or a digital signal. And from there on, 
there is an entire range of additional components. Mostly in automation, they're all hidden away. I'm just like trying to give like some background information because I think this might even be interesting for automation people, what's exactly happening there. So you have all these types of sensors, these types of signals, and now they, they're like still analog. And to convert them from analog to digital, you, you're typically using, who, who would have wondered, uh, analog to digital converter, ADCs. And from there on, you're taking this analog signal and you're trying to convert it into digital, digital numbers. And then it really depends on your actual system on how you are now inputting this into the PLC. You can, there are some smart sensors out there which will provide you like a digital signal, um, stuff like IO Link, for example. Yeah, that would be my question. So we use IO Link a lot. Um, so those uh, this kind of protocol, where I know that you guys uh, really like it. Um, Maybe you can uh, give us a quick uh, deep dive into, into I.O. Link. What is it and why do you love it? Yeah, so in I.O. Link, most, like all of these components that I just described, um, like converting like a resistance uh, and putting it into 10 to uh, 0 to 10 volt and then having analog digital converter, they're all inside of these sensors. And then additionally, you have some advanced logics on it um, so that you can take basically what you need to do you take a I.O. link sensor, you connect it to a I.O. link gateway. We're using a lot of uh, the IFM ones out there. Uh, the IFM I.O. link masters, we even have like sensor connect to automate read it out. Um, so so what you only need to connect it and it will already contain all the information to interpret the signals coming from the sensor. Um, so even though the sensor will still provide like a digital signal, you still might need some information about the units or anything like this. And I really like I.O. Link because it's all contained in there. So we only have to take a sensor, just plug it in, and it will automatically show up in the unified namespace. We will come that, uh, to that later. It really saves a lot of time. If you don't have that, there's also the options at PLCs. You have like input cards, for example, 4 to 20 milliampere or 0 to 10 volt. You can also do, a, do it like this. There are also other protocols than I.O. Link RS232, for example. Um, but these are like the different types of sensors. And especially in process control, they're all connected then to the PLC. So let's uh, then go to the PLC. You already said that it's a programmable logic controller. Maybe you can give us a little bit more of the historic background and the uh, historic evolution of the PLC, because I think it's quite interesting to see where it comes from and kind of like the use of relays in older machines to nowadays PLCs, which are probably quite modern compared to what we used a couple of years back. Yeah, on, on our learning platform, we are linking to YouTube videos of real parts. I hope I can, I spell it out correctly. Um, they have like really good YouTube tutorials. If you really want to deep dive into these types of topics, um, I can now give you like a brief overview over it. And um, so where are PLCs coming from? Like really a lot of years ago, somewhere in the 80s, a lot of the stuff was still electrical wiring. Um, and this is like really important to understand the entire concept of PLCs, that it comes from electrical wiring. So so drawing schematics, electrical schematics. Um, so in the 80s, the machines were, they didn't have a digital control in it. Everything was hardwired. And at some point, people started using computers to abstract the principle of using relays and all this hardware wiring. So they would use a PLC so that the, if they want to do changes, that they wouldn't have to replace like actual relays. Also, side fact, relays are very, uh, if you use them regularly, they will fail and you don't want, and there were people just running around the production line just exchanging physical relays because they were failing. So with PLCs, it was all uh, limited, brought it down so that you can only use like a single PLC um, and you can start to, to configure it, you can start to program it uh, instead of hard wiring everything. And this principle of this electrical wiring is going through the entire through the entire PLC part. Um, you It starts with the programming languages. So all the programming languages, there are, you, you can even see, see it here if you're watching it on YouTube, you see like an excerpt of this video here. Um, 
There are programming languages for PLCs. There are like, I think, six or seven. They are standardized. Um, but programming PLC is not like doing it something Node-RED or programming something in C++. Um, it's actually very near to that original part of wiring devices together. So like one programming language of it is actually graphical. So it's still very, very popular where you take like boxes, which which like an electrical expert would, would draw to design machine. You just draw them now digitally and the PLC takes care of, of all the rest. Um, so it takes all the signals from the sensors. It applies logics on it. You can apply, for example, like a PID con controller logic, uh, and then it controls the actuators. And there are like various vendors, and each vendors have kind of their own type of programming language. They all have their own type of PLC. So every vendor is trying to make it make that the, 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 the customers use as much from them and not from the others. It's all of them are kind of closed systems, uh, so it's also quite quite uh, difficult and most large companies they're saying okay we either go with only Siemens or we're only going with with Rockwell or only have back off PLCs um, yeah this is this is typically how it works okay so to sum it up you have a you have different kind of sensors for example a temperature sensor that is basically uh, the the thing that um, yeah measures something It uh, gives some data to the PLC with uh, contains some kind of logic, and then it uh, gives some some input to the actuators uh, to to turn on an engine or to a machine or something. So uh, in a in the case of the refrigerator, the sensor would be a temperature sensor who says, okay, the temperature is too high. The logic goes to the or the data goes to the PLC. With that the, with which has the logic, um, if the temperature is too high, you need to cool it down. So it gives the, the input to the actuator to, to cool the uh, refrigerator yep. down again. And everything is uh, named control loop. So this is kind of like the whole concept uh, about that. Yeah, and the PLCs, maybe one addition, one information that still I think is quite important. The PLC is basically a computer, but the computer is just designed for this real-time control. So PLC is focusing on real-time data. So with a normal CPU, a normal computer, that's a normal processor that's in your laptop, it's typically not designed to be real-time compatible. It's designed to have a lot of applications running at the same time. And sometimes an application might have to wait like a millisecond. And in PLCs, everything is designed that it's real-time compatible so because if you control i mean refrigerate the temperature okay it's fine you, you can wait a millisecond but if you're controlling like motors engines and stuff like this sometimes you really cannot wait a millisecond so you really want to have this guarantees that you can control it and you don't have to wait for a windows update whatever Uh, and when you say computer, it's also not there for some kind of data analytics on something. It's only for this kind of logic to, exactly. to fulfill that with uh, it with uh, live uh, data, basically. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, very interesting. And I would say um, let's get to the next session. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, nice. Let's go to the next session. Bye. Bye-bye.